And who else would I rather speak to in Las Vegas than OutKick founder Clay yes. Travis? I am having a fabulous time so far. You spend a lot of time out I here. have been here. What are your Vegas tips, <laughs> by the way? I have been here for far too long. My, my tips, my, yeah. my best tips is just try to get some sleep where you can. Yeah. Squeeze it in where you can because it all accumulates, the sleep deficiency. And by, let's see, what am I on? Uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I'm on day eight. Which is unheard it start, of for It starts Vegas. to really add up. Yeah. And I, at the end of this all, I will be here for 12 days. So I am just super excited to, like, take it very easy tonight. Yeah. And you know it's also you run into people you haven't – you, yeah, you yeah. probably can oh, speak yeah, to. Oh, yeah, for sure. How many people on Radio Row Tons. you have yeah, worked with Yeah, this is my 12th past, year or, on Radio Row. So you just run into so many people yeah. and they want to catch up and – it's great to see everybody, don't get me wrong, but having conversations constantly, you just it, it chips away at your your inner peace. I <laughs> used to have 5 a.m. starts on radio, right? Uh, Central time, 6 a.m. East Coast. And Radio Row is like, right now where we're talking, super active. When I'll tell you what, at 5 a.m. when you walk into Radio Row, there's like four people here. It was like me, Boomer Esiason, um, there's like three shows that are actually live that early, and it is dead. Um, and so yeah. th what I found was pacing is so important because if you have to get up really early and you got to go full, uh, full bore, it's hard to stay out at all. So oh, I would try not to do difficult. anything until Thursday night. I would try to be in bed at a decent time until Thursday night. Friday you can get up, be a little bit rough, and then Saturday, uh, Friday night, and then Saturday night were the nights to have fun. So will you be staying for the game? I believe that we are, yes. Okay, so. Are you going? I am going to yes. the game. Have uh, you been to this? You, you've been, you were last year on the sideline, right? Uh, yes, last year I was on the I was on the field pregame, uh, yeah. which was awesome. A couple of years prior, I was at literally this exact same matchup, Chiefs Niners yeah. in Miami. Uh, that was so, a Fox Super Bowl right before COVID. Yes, Remember before that? the world just went yeah. completely insane. Yeah, it's crazy because that was a Fox Super Bowl. We did the whole Fox Bet Live all from South Beach. If you remember, Fox yes. had an unbelievable set. set. Um, and uh, and then the world came undone. And, and who knew? Who knew it was going to happen? We would have partied a little bit harder. I actually <laughs> think that I got COVID there. <laughs> I do. Because I, 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 every time I come back from the Super Bowl, I'm a little bit sick. Uh, right? Because you get run down. Yes. You're out in huge crowds. You're not sleeping very much, to your point. You're not necessarily eating healthy. Right. Like, the, kind of the behind-the-scenes hectic nature of this um, all adds up. And so uh, – I, I remember getting back and thinking, like, man, I, I feel really crappy. I, I legit think – I mean, I probably had a COVID nine times by now. Uh, but I think the first time – I think I had it, like, February of 20. Because I tested positive for the antibodies. I don't remember exactly when I got it. So uh, I could have had it one of the first uh, cases. Well, I could if have you, been patient if you zero had it, almost. if you had it right now, I would not. It would not bother me. I, I am not. A, I, I'm not scared I, of it. Also, somebody does. I'm sure in here right now. Yeah, somebody certainly has it. Uh, everybody's in Vegas, obviously. Uh, to your point, massive crowds. Uh, I've run into so many different people. Uh, one person who's now on the radar of potentially being in Vegas is Donald Trump. I saw that. Is and I heard you were texting with Don Trump Jr. Did Did you get any intel uh, is he here? Well. Let's see. He has not texted me back uh, yet because we were going to have Don Jr. on uh, Clay and Buck. Oh, nice. Um, and uh, he's a Don Jr. decent outkick fan, big sports fan, uh, as is Trump. I didn't know he was going to be here. I think the ultimate baller move would be for him just to roll into Radio Row. It would be. Can you be. imagine how crazy people would go? Now, my question is how do you think people would respond? I know we would welcome him with open arms onto yeah. our set, but – what do you think the other outlets would do if Donald Trump was You know, I, I remember there's been a few people who came through Radio Row, and they're so famous that it didn't really matter what you thought about them. Everybody just kind of, like, you could feel it. Um, if I remember correctly, Beyonce came one year. Oh. And just, like, the whole I'm, place I'm sorry, came who, undone. Who, who got Beyonce? I don't know. I think she was, well, I think it was the year she was maybe performing. Oh. You know, they come and, like, do a walkthrough and... But she came through Radio Row, and the whole place came undone. They were like, sorry, show yeah. is on. Uh, pause right now. we got to go get Beyonce. Right after the Tebow mania. Do you remember when Tebow won the playoff game? They beat the Steelers, I think. And that next year, um, they were on uh, Tebow. I mean, that next month or whatever, Tebow came on Radio Row, and the place came undone. Wow. Um, and then I think Madonna came through one year, if I remember correctly. Okay, um, so, so there's been all, some showstoppers, yes. Yeah, but so I think the reaction would be similar to that, where it's almost like an Elvis in the bu building kind of feel, where even if you're not a big fan, I mean, it's pretty awesome to say that you've seen the president or the former president, Absol right? Even absolutely. just to see him, to say nothing of shake a hand or get a picture or something, just to see him 
uh, is a big deal. So I think this place would come undone. Now, I don't know if the NFL would let him. Uh, well, that's a good question. The NFL, I feel like, as far as uh, their relationship with politicians, at least as it stands right now, is basically non-existent yeah. because Joe Biden, for the second year in a row, has dismissed his... And then Trump came out and said that he would do the yeah. interview. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I think it would be such a baller move for him to roll in here and be like, hey, I'll do a press conference at Radio Row. I'll answer, I'll do my own Super Bowl interview here and really kind of show up everybody. How crazy is it Biden will not even... I mean, this is the... In terms of the big of a deal, I mean, it's not. I it's, mean, that, it's coming, well, and it's a, it's a fun, lighthearted opportunity to just talk to people and express your support for what's going on. Biggest sporting event in in our country over the course of the year, and, and still a no. No, look, I mean, but, the Robert but probably can't speak the, coherently. So the he's Robert to. Her special counsel report came out, and they basically said we're not charging him with a crime yeah. because we don't think that he's capable Mentally there, right? Fit. We don't think that a uh, jury would convict him because he just seems kind of like a doddering old you know, senior citizen, which is what he is, who doesn't have a great memory anymore. And now that's scary because they're saying we want a, him to be how, yeah, president right, right. for four more years. Right. Um, I, think, I think this, to me, this feels like a guillotine moment where they are basically saying we are chopping your head off uh, and we are going to end up with a new nominee, metaphorically speaking, yeah. of course, since people lose their mind. But, you know, like, there's that So you think their moment. language was purposeful? It feels like this is the off-ramp for him running because they it's hard to argue. They've been saying for a long time, oh, it's all made up, that he's got mental you know, issues, that there's something going on. When that report comes out and it's as glaring and transparent in that statement as it is, it's very hard to say – oh, this is a Fox News fever dream, mm -hmm. this is a right-wing conspiracy theory, when a guy who is going super easy on him, right? I mean, look, Robert Hur says he's committed felonies, but I'm not going to charge him. It's hard to argue that he gave a totally right. biased report. If anything, he went way easier on Biden than he deserved. And so I think this is a game changer in terms of the way that it – that what comes from here. Wow. Well, speaking of – Game changers. Yes. Uh, Taylor Swift has taken the NFL by storm. Yeah. I think her support and her relationship with Travis Kelsey has added $350 million to the NFL this I season. I saw that report. Which is insane. Yeah. How many times, you know, I know you just got done doing your, your gambling bit with Kelly in Vegas. What's the over under on how many times we are going to see Taylor Swift on our screens during the course of the season? So Bowl? I think it's fascinating. You probably were watching on the AFC championship game when they showed her and she said, please go away, I'm paraphrasing, something yeah. like that. Like she saw herself on television and she told them to go away. Now, in general, the Super Bowl, they feature way more celebrities than they do a normal game, right? It's not uncommon for them to find people sitting in yes. the stands. They advertise the shows that are going to be on after the Super Bowl. CBS has got it. I don't know what show they're putting on afterwards, but one way you advertise it is you have the guy or the girl sitting in the stands, and they're like, oh, there is, you know, whoever it is. There's uh, Taylor Sheridan, whose new Yellowstone show is debuting immediately after. I don't know what's coming yeah. on right afterwards. So there's a higher, I would say, celebrity component. Every year also, the ratings peak at the halftime show, which a lot of people don't know. Every year, not a close game like last year where it comes down to the Eagles uh, Chiefs last minute, it peaks at halftime. So, uh, and that's obviously all celebrity related. Yes. And so um, I, I think they'll show her, if I were going over under, I would say three and a half times. Now, partly okay. it's also, uh, how does Kelsey do? Right? Right. Uh, right. Because if he has a big, a big play, it just makes like, sense to pan to her. In right. the same way that you would show a dad or mom. Right. You know, they're going to show Brock Purdy's mom and dad in the crowd, I bet, during the course of the game. Because that humanizes the athlete and makes everybody out there, now that I'm a dad of three, I love parent shots. Like when I was yeah. before, I, before I was a, a parent, I was like, I don't care about any of the parents. And now I'm like, oh, that's so sweet. Oh, it's great to see mom and dad. Um, so they usually do that. I would bet if Kelsey has a good game, I would set the over under if I were gambling at three and a half uh, pops. Because I do think there's 100 million people watching ish, 120 million, whatever the number is going to be. I, I don't think it's crazy to say five to 10 million of those people might be super interested and more interested in seeing Taylor Swift than they are what's yeah. going to go on the field. Yeah, I don't think that's asking or really predicting too much. 
But I think the Chiefs' success is very much contingent on how well Travis Kelsey can play as he's been a big part of their game uh, all season long. So what's your prediction here? You think the Chiefs are going to pull off a I, back-to-back Super Bowl victory? or is this one No, go I'm the on – I think the 49ers are going to win. I think they are going to cover. Uh, I think they're going to win 24-21. to 21. The Niners are a two-and-a-half-point favorite, so I've got them winning by three. Um, a little bit under the number, I think, on over-under is 47 and a half. So I'm a little bit under. I'm not really going to touch that too aggressively. Um, and uh, I think the Niners will do a decent job with Travis Kelsey. And ultimately, I think this comes down to Brock Purdy has a lot better weapons than Patrick Mahomes mm-hmm. does. Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle, all four of those guys arguably are better than any skill position player Patrick Mahomes has. We know how many drop balls Patrick Mahomes receivers have had. All of that, to me, adds up to uh, the Niners finding a way to avenge the loss that they had four years ago in Miami before COVID happened in a game that they led late and should have Mm -hmm. arguably won. I think Kyle Shanahan and company gets their revenge, takes home the hardware, wins 24-21. Okay, I like it. This would be the only Super Bowl then at this point in my life I would have attended that the Chiefs have not won. Oh, wow. If your prediction is, in fact, correct. So, Clay, thank you so much. Thank you. Always Keep up good the good work. You. Absolutely. Good luck on making it 12 days in a row in Vegas. Uh, yes, please just pray for me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and now for more insight and perspective into the game and also what's happening here in Vegas during Super Bowl week. Here's my conversation with none other than my good friend, Jay Glazer. Look who I just ran into, he one of my best to. friends, Jay that? Glazer. How about them apples? I, that's one of the beauty, beautiful things yeah, about Super Bowl yeah. is you run into the yep. best people you've ever met, oh, yeah, and they're all in one place. For a long time. <laughs> so how's it going so far? Uh, I'm exhausted. Yeah. It's, only, um, it's, it's, only, it's only June. I don't know. <laughs> what is today? I have no idea. Wait, June? Yeah, I don't know. what. I'm, I'm, <laughs> you can see I'm delirious. I started at 5.30 this morning and just kept going. Okay, so. so yeah, now you're already like six hours in. Is this your schedule for the rest of the week for no, the most no, part? No, 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 just today, just today. And then I just go and, you know me, I go banter around and I go, you know. You're a social you know, butterfly. Social butterfly, yeah. But first time, no party, no Glazer Palooza. Thank God. Wait. You know how much you used to drive me crazy, right? It was, and last year, there was like 5,000 people and I had a, they gave away wristbands before the party started. So I had to go get every single like VIP in myself. And I was just like, I'm, I'm not doing this game. So there's probably a lot of people don't, that don't know what Glazer Palooza is. So yes. let's spell it out for them, what it once was. Glazer Palooza was the best party, Super Bowl party. It was the first Super Bowl party of the week. It kicked it off on Wednesdays. And we, man, we had the biggest, the big who played there and it was great. And I only called it Glazer Palooza to piss off Michael Strahan. <laughs> no other reason than that. And it just took. Yeah. I mean, I remember I would make yeah. a special yeah. trip in early because yeah, right. I had to yeah. be at Glazer Palooza. Uh-huh. Oh, that one in San Francisco was wild. One. Remember that one? Oh, yes. yeah, yeah. Like 5,000 people? Yeah, it was too much of a headache. So so now that you don't have Glazer Palooza on your yeah, plate, yeah. what does the social the life of Jay Glazer look like during Super Bowl week? Uh, it'll be a lot calmer. Um, I got, um, I think I'm going to Delilah tonight. My friends own Delilah, so I'll go there for a little bit. And then tomorrow. Tony. Uh, yeah, Tony, yeah. right. Then uh, Tony LaPena, get a little shout out. And then uh, <laughs> tomorrow we'll, we'll do the uh, the Wasserman party, right? The yeah. Sandy Montag party, Maury Gosfran yeah, party. And for those of you who don't know, we have the same agent. He's the greatest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I set you up with the agent. He did. You, you yeah, are the right. reason I have I, the best agent. Yes, I believed in you. I knew it. I saw it. And then um, the commissioner's ball on Friday. And then I think I got something with John Lynch after that on Friday night. And then I'm, I'm getting the hell out of here on Saturday. Oh, you're, I'm, you're I'm, not staying for the game. No, the years we don't do the game, I try not to go. Um, I'm actually hosting a watch party at Yamava Casino, which is Yamava and the Palms are owned by the same people, and it's out in uh, L.A., which is an amazing place. So I'm going over there doing a watch party over there. How is L.A. these days? L.A. is rainy right now. It was, rainy, living, here. Yeah. It was rainy here recently, too, well, always. That. It was, yeah, this was like, I felt like, uh, I, felt like I needed uh, to build an ark and put two animals of, <laughs> of every kind on it, yeah. But LA's good. I mean, LA's great. a lot yeah. of people are like a little no, bit no, down on I'm, LA no, right no, now. I'm in Malibu now, so I'm oh, away. Oh, okay. On the so beach. you're away. But I'm what's, the what's the homeless situation like? Is there all the. I'm in Malibu? No. Okay, it's, still, no. it's a very. very uh, okay. No, no, no. We're good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, what else is going on in your life? I mean, you're about to wrap up the busiest part yes. of your year. Yeah, it's been a crazy year also. And then, yeah, now I'm doing a. Uh, I'm walking around here for uh, a company called Supernus for uh, you better than anybody else knows all the mental health issues I've been through it. My ADHD, a lot, I don't know if you knew, but I was one of the first adults ever diagnosed with adult ADD in America, on the East Coast of America, in 1989. And wow. yeah, and 
man, I got put on Ritalin in 89, and then we have depression too, that's not good, you know, these peaks and valleys, and then eventually turned to Adderall too, and that has just messed up my brain chemistry, and you've kind of been around it where I have those peaks and valleys. I got off everything, and then all of a sudden this drug came about called uh, Kelbre, Q-E-L-B-R-E-E, -E, and it's a non-stimulant. You actually take it at night. Oh. Right, it's a complete opposite. Oh, yeah, that's yes, the right? opposite of what you opposite, would yes. in your mind So then. it actually calms me down at night, gets my brain to start, the roommates talk nicely with each other and calm down a little bit, and I wake up the next day in a much calmer state, and and then, you know, when you're on TV and you have ADDDD, LMNOP like I do, <laughs> you got, you know, you have like, you're, and you're, you got one subject and you got four more to talk about. Yeah. In your mind, you're already on the fourth. So that's why I do need some help with some things like this and I couldn't use the stuff I was doing in the past. That's just my experience. Maybe other people have good experience yeah. with those other medications, but Kelbury's been well, a game changer. Well, I don't think, I think the people that have good experiences is because they don't know anything different, right? right. They've yeah. rewired their brain, like yeah. you just said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, but again, also, not everybody has the depression and anxiety that I have also, yeah. so it, it affects me differently than a lot of other people. Okay, but this so has been a game changer. So you're here spreading the word about that, yep. but also, I mean, Jay, I know how busy you are during football season, mm -hmm. and it doesn't just, it's not just game day, what people think, oh, you you get information yeah. fed to you, and it's just easy. Yeah. You have like this whole process, it takes over your whole life. Yes. Are you excited to have a little bit of downtime coming up? Yes, yeah, so I'm actually going to Panama on a red eye the night the Super Bowl ends after my watch party at Yamaba to go get stem cell treatment. Um, You've done that on, before. I did. It saved me from a level three fusion on my back. And now I'm going to go see if they can heal my lungs. Remember my lungs aspirated yeah. a few years ago? See if they can heal my lungs. Um, I got a, a torn rotator cuff over here. See if they could do that. But I was literally going to get three level fusion a year ago. I went down there. This place called Origins. I woke up. <laughs> I was with my, my fiance in the bed. I woke up. I got out of bed. And she's like, Oh my God! I'm like, what? She's like, you you're, just jumped you're, up. You're five seven again. You're, you're, <laughs> you're, yeah, you're standing straight up, and it was a game changer. The place is called Origins, and it's in Johns Hopkins University Hospital. There, it's uh, and and Panama City is incredible. Like that's that's our new jam. I, I, yeah. You know, I've heard good things. Okay, yeah. I have a question. You just mentioned that. How tall is Rosie, your fiance? Um, five five. Okay, so she's shorter than you. Yeah. Okay. No, because I know she did some modeling, five, so I wasn't yeah. sure if she was maybe like five seven. I don't know. How tall is Rosie? It's a good question. No, she's about my height. Okay. Yeah. So, but with heels on, she's probably taller she's than you. Tall. What's it I'm like? A, I'm the tallest guy walking in the room. Jay, what's it? What's you know me. <laughs> I'm the tallest guy walking in the room. Uh, yes, personality, yes. ego-wise, yeah, right. absolutely, absolutely tallest guy in the room. Attitude-wise, no doubt about it. Yes. Um, okay, so how, how's everything going on the home front? Ooh, when's the, when's the so wedding? We're going, Rosie and I are going to elope um, first week of May. Oh, we're gonna go to Amalfi Coast, go to Italy, go elope, and- um, Is this breaking news? This, this is breaking news, oh yeah. God. Yeah, we actually just made the decision the other day. Yes, I'm breaking it here. We were eloping the first week of May in Italy, probably go for a few weeks, we'll go there. Um, we're gonna, um, we're gonna pit about four different spots. I don't know which place we're gonna get married at yet. We're gonna do like Amalfi, um, Ravello, maybe Capri, probably Rome, Positano. probably Tuscany. I'm not, uh, uh, we're going to throw that one off. Yeah, yeah, throw that one okay. off. Yeah. Okay. But, yeah, well, we're excited. But and she deserves Sorren it. Sorrento is also very pretty. It's, I heard that. Yeah. yeah, but the way it's getting set up, I want to see Sorrento, but the way it's getting set up, I'm kind of letting the, we've got a wedding planner for it, but it's just us, we're eloping. Wow. Yeah, I've already done one wedding and it didn't work out well, and I had all my knucklehead friends there. I'm not paying for them again. I'm not doing that. So, so no Michael Strahan by your side at this one? No, not that one. No, no. <laughs> No. Well, no. that's exciting. That's yeah. a nice way to, to end Mary, the end. You know, she's an identical twin, yes. the Tennyson twins. Even for her, like Rosie's amazing. Rosie is like, she's lived for everybody else. And she's like, I've never done anything just for me. And I want to do this just for me. So I'm, I'm excited. I think I like our lives are just beginning. I also think I've told you like, I'm 54, she's 55, even though she looks like she's 22. And like, I think we're showing people it's never too late to find love if you work on yourself that could open up and and you and I you and I have had deep conversations yeah. about like like finding that and what's kind of blocking us and getting in the way and um, I, I've really done a lot of work to be able to feel worthy of it so I don't screw it up and sabotage it and even when I do with her she now like I've told her what I need and she'll say hey um, I'm not going anywhere no yeah. matter what you say I'm not going anywhere and I got you that's all I really want to hear from somebody. Well, I'm excited because I'm finally going to meet Rosie this I week. Oh, you are, yes. 
So right. that'll, that'll be great. Yeah, and yeah. I'm so happy for you. you. I know you're running around like crazy, so I'm going to let you go. Thank but you. You, you, you can never truly get rid of me. I'll no, just be yeah, over your shoulder no, no matter no wherever you are. Yeah, no doubt about it. Yeah, I, I, I'm excited for you to meet Rosie. She knows all about you. So it's just, she's like my little Charlie. It's great. And I'll leave it with the, the phrase, mental health, no, mental wealth. Mental wealth. Mental wealth. Yes, Unbreakable Mental Wealth Podcast. I've changed it from mental health to mental wealth because I think mental health, I gave it words for, through my book and my podcast, which we needed to do to start having this conversation. But people still look at like, oh, he's just talking about depression and anxiety. Like, no, I'm not. There's so much like all the things we've yeah. overcome on our journey to get to where we are. Every successful person has had to battle all these different things. And there's so much you could learn by getting through whatever adversity is on your journey mm -hmm. to success. I want people to, to be inspired by this. So now it's a mental wealth podcast. Okay, before I let you go, Super Bowl prediction, who is winning? I don't do predictions. It's paralysis. Come on. It's paralysis by overanalysis. Because <laughs> both teams, they'll usually tell me what they're going to do, and I'll be like, oh, oh, that sounds great. And then the other team are like, yeah, we're probably going to do this. I'm like, oh, that sounds great. So it's paralysis by overanalysis. Plus, I like my money. I don't bet on anything. Yeah, fair, fair. Yeah, you, right. you need it. You yeah. need it for the yeah. uh, the trip for to the trip. Yeah. Amalfi well, Coast. Def and definitely. I'm going to need a link to the yeah. gift registry because, of course, i got to send you a, a wedding gift. I just send money. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> good to see you. Well, from talk of Super Bowl and all the goings on in Vegas leading up to it to the talk of eloping shortly after Super Bowl, we now turn our attention to a ticket that actually could be even tougher than Super Bowl 58. I'm talking about Power Slap 6, so with more on that, let's turn our attention to my conversation with the president of Power Slap, Frank Lamasella. Now joined by Frank Lamasella, commissioner hey, of Power Slap. I am so excited, Frank. Power Slap 6, the first time we're taking it out of the apex. Yep. I mean, I've been I've been with you guys since the very beginning, so Your this means one, just as much to me as to yep. you. How big of a deal is this? It's huge for us because we started this thing five events ago, beginning of January. It's now turned into a massive sport. There's betting on this thing. It's regulated in three, four states. We're going to have a few more states open this year. This is the first one on the road. Brand new Durango Casino. It's beautiful there. And we're going to be the first sporting event there. And it's, it's going to be awesome. We got our first women's co-main. A lot of firsts, and it's, it's incredible. It is wild to think how much this product has grown. Yep. I don't even think any of you, I mean, internally would have expected it to grow as fast as it did. Yeah, we still get amazed by like every time we have another one of these viral videos hit. Like our newest one over the last month is now 220 million on YouTube. Like these numbers are Bieber videos, Taylor Swift, Sheena you just interviewed. Yeah. Her, her clip on Instagram is bigger than every Taylor Swift post. Unbelievable. On it doesn't even make sense. And then you start, we have, it's across all, it's crazy. It's crazy. And then now we're at, now we're building a real business. We have real, there's real money behind this. Real partners, um, Monster Energy, Anheuser Busch, Fanatics. We have we're building betting regulation, the whole thing. Um, and now we're going to take it on the road for the first event. And we'll go out on the road a few more times this year. Ooh, uh, yeah. ooh, there's a little teaser, and that's for exciting sure. for me because I mean, obviously, I'll be there. Yes. So I'm I'm intrigued to know what that means. Uh, what what differences? I mean, outside of the fact that we'll be at Durango yep. on Friday, any other like things that are going well, to be surrounding one, the event that, that are different we, from the past. Look, it's Super Bowl weekend. Oh. So it's the biggest it's there the biggest go. event in Vegas. So we're going to have a ton of people at the event. Uh, we increased capacity for Durango uh, compared to Apex. So it's probably about twice as big, maybe 750, 800 people. Wow. Um, sold tickets for the first time, and we sold out uh, for our yeah, VIP Pretty packages. quickly, right? Yeah, we had an almost like our average ticket price was almost $1,000 for this thing. Charles, I'm sorry. Yeah. Hold yeah, up. The yep. average ticket price was a thousand dollars. Right around. Yeah. We we had platinum, gold. So it's all VIP packages. So what is so that's average? What's the most expensive ticket? I think someone paid like a twenty two hundred wow. for a ticket. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean Charles that Bar is even Charles Barkley's a part of this. For Wait, this I'm sorry. Weekend. Charles Barkley's coming. Yeah, and <laughs> he's a part of it. So Charles is not only coming. Charles is a new vodka, Redmond vodka. There going to be a part of the show and oh my gosh. Charles is doing some meet and greets. Yeah, it, it's incredible. Okay, so super expensive tickets. Yep. Uh, what else? You were saying it would do more well, people. More people. The guest list is outrageous, the list obviously. Is in, the guest list is insane. It's the hottest ticket. Dana says the hottest ticket of the weekend and it has been and we're still getting, as I've been here and getting more texts of can I come, can I come? There's, yeah. there's no seats left. Uh, but, <laughs> standing room only. Yeah, standing room only. Uh, but I just think the vibe of having, eight, you've been there, it's crazy how loud it is with 300 people oh, when there's yeah. a KO. Now we're, we're, we're doubling that. It's a tighter room. It, it, the live event experience is one of a kind. Uh, so I'm happy to, that other people can now see it and experience yeah. it. Yeah, and what about the new crop of talent? Yeah. Uh, because every single show we keep seeing new faces uh, from all different 
different yeah. walks of life. I mean, now we're getting, actually, you know, at the beginning, it was people, maybe a couple that had dabbled, or, yeah. you know, we had um, a couple people that were real names in, yeah. in slap fighting. But for the most part, just people who were ready to see where it could take them. But now we're, we're finding, you know, you're, you're delving into actual athletes, champions right. of different sports, that kind of thing. So what type of new faces are well, we going to see? Well, look, when we event? first started, we went out and grabbed the best talent that existed out there and that was guys like wolverine the bell who still hold their title yeah. today so that was clearly the right move um the first crop of guys some are still here some aren't and now the second season guys they they were really good i mean they're learning and then the athletic talent of them are getting better right mm -hmm. so on our main event we have two former football players our main card two former football yeah. players brian ellis is a former university of texas defensive end like d1 wow. you know, so he's got power he knows how to hit and move his body and that's yeah. what that's what's turning into we have another guy um zach zane he's a former he's like professional mma 30 fights so now you're starting to see more and more of these guys you think it's going to continue in that direction 100%. too where you're going to see a lot of people who are wanting to like make sure that they can get involved i mean even with people that have the different type of yeah i mean i think they look at the they look at the results like you can be someone like sheena Sheena, double, first of all, Sheena is one of our biggest stars, and she doubled her Instagram following just after her last, uh, her last match. But where else are you getting visibility of hundreds of millions of views? Yeah. I mean, the reality is on a lot of the UFC clips, it's not, it's not, even, that, it's not even that much. So um, it's been insane, and I think more and more people are going to be attracted to it. Did you ever imagine earlier in your life, uh, I don't even know, yeah. what did you do before this? I, <laughs> I was an M&A lawyer at a big firm in New York <laughs> called Paul Weiss. Wait, so, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was an M&A lawyer, a white shoe firm, wear wow. your suit and tie every day. Um, I actually worked on when Endeavor bought the UFC. Yeah. Endeavor was a client of, of mine and the firm. Uh, and then I got close. So I got that's to know how you made the connect. Uh, okay. Yeah, I got to know Hunter. And then I worked for UFC for four or five years. And then Doing legal legal stuff. Yeah, right? yeah, okay. yeah, yep, exactly. And then now you're the commissioner of Power Slap. Yeah. And it, crazy, it's Crazy, right? Life is crazy. It's all about timing, opportunity, and, you know, you got to take chances when you can. And, and this chance came up. You have Dana, you have Lorenzo, Hunter. These guys built, really, the whole industry, and they asked you to do something. Yeah, yes. and, you know, just talking with Dana, you know, on a, on a regular basis about the growth of this sport and what it means. Yeah. I mean, there is such passion behind the product and a desire to make this yep. as big as possible. So I, the sky is certainly the limit. Uh, I will say we all really care. We, we come in every day and make sure we build this thing to, we, we see so much potential, especially like follow, what happened with the UFC in the early days, I wasn't there, yeah. um, but Dana was, and he tells you the stories of how everything is exactly the same. Everyone hating on it when it first started, people not wanting to be a part of it, and then slowly but surely it all changes, and, and it's already, I feel like it's already I can't hit that point. I, I can't believe how big it already is. Yeah. I, I just, when we were kind of going through those initial steps at the beginning, or just, it was being explained. Yeah. I think that they were like, you know, we might do, try to aim for three events last year. I, yep. And then suddenly there were five events last year. And now it's, I already know, like, I already have like a bit of a schedule for, you know, for the next yeah. like first half of the year, and I'm like, oh wow, we are we are moving forward. Yeah, and you you got involved when we at least had some idea of what we were doing. <laughs> if you had come in March in 2022 when we first started this, like we held the closed door qualifier. I, I was there. Were you there in March? Yeah. You were there in March Frank, 2022. Okay. Of course. Me I, I I that's how I actually initially got involved with the got UFC. It. They okay. brought me in Perfect. to do the uh, the auditions, and I was doing the interviews, and they were like, oh, this girl's good. And then they started involving right. me with so, UFC so you as were, well. You were watching. So I think Power Slap for my entire involvement with I the company it. in general. I love it. You were watching like how we were we would put up a match. We'd all get together, and be like, oh, what the hell was that? Yeah. What just went wrong? And then we'd switch it again. Switch it again. Oh yeah. And now we're still improving it. You know, now I'm going to start bringing in things like cool, like technology things, like heart rate monitors, so you could see like how someone's feeling when they're about oh, to nice. get hit. Um, we're we're doing some LEDs on the on the stage, and it's going to be. It's going to be a big year for the sport and for the business. Well, the technology, as we already know, behind the training aspect mm -hmm. of it all is just next year. Yeah. Uh, the, the science and the, the info that goes into it uh, that the fighters have access to is, is pretty phenomenal. So, Frank, I'm super pumped. I'm pumped. I cannot wait. This, this week in general, I mean, we're here in Las Vegas, which, I mean, UFC is basically like the most important thing in the in yeah. the city uh you've made sure of that over the past few years power slap now making a strong case to make it you know equally as much of their city as well super bowls here uh, I moved all there of the five biggest celebrities ago. from all over the world i mean yeah. everything is happening in vegas the, this week. five years ago i moved here it was just usc yeah now it's 
three or four professional sports team, the Sphere, Super Bowl, F1. It, it's The city is really turning into So if you're not in Vegas this week, you're missing out, bottom line. 100%. Well, Frank, thank you so much. Thank and you. I cannot wait. Literally, I'm going to say it again. I cannot wait. We can't wait for this to, week. Power to have you call six. it. Here we go. All right. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, everybody, that is it. We have wrapped up a week's worth of shows from Las Vegas. So much fun that we have. And now, soon enough, in just a couple of days, we will know the winner of the 58th annual Super Bowl. And then I will be here in Vegas to report back on Monday morning. So until then, everybody, have a fantastic weekend. Enjoy the game. Follow me on social media at Charlie on TV. And I will see you bright and early on Monday.